Hey everyone, I'm Jason Newfield. I'm the director. I like to use my hands. I'm handsy. Jason. Hey everyone, Jason here. We are one week out. That means seven days to the theatrical and VOD release of Dauntless the Battle of Midway. Check out the description below to see if there's a city near you that's playing it or check it out on the various VOD platforms. The Blu-ray for Dauntless is available on Amazon right now. So click on the link below and get your copy so you can see more behind the scenes footage like how we shot on the ocean. So enjoy this week's behind the scenes video. Hey everyone, I'm Jason Newfield. I'm the director of photography for Dauntless, the Battle of Midway. We decided to shoot outdoors because green screen always looks better when you shoot in the actual elements that you're trying to portray. If you're gonna be inside, that's fine if you do it in a green screen stage, but if you're doing something on the outside, there's just nothing that can replace natural sunlight. It just gives it a realism that you just cannot get from studio lights. To make sure that I got the right angle of light, we put the plane on a Lazy Susan, so we got a 360 degree rotation, so I can angle our actors in the way that I want them to be whatever time of day that we are shooting. Basically, all we had to do was wall them off on three sides or four sides if we needed to, and then we can just rotate the plane to whatever angle we wanted to, to fit our lighting needs. Shooting outdoors poses its own challenges no matter where you are. Being in a residential neighborhood, that just means that you're leaving yourself open to cars driving by, sirens, planes, birds, people, whatever happens to be coming by that day. And also the heat. Um, and being in the elements, it's amazing what the difference is. Spending 12 hours outside versus you know, 12 hours inside on a green screen stage, completely different feeling. It'll just wear you out. And you know, when we were shooting Dauntless, it was pretty much in the middle of summer and it was just hot as hell. Obviously this is a period piece and it's really difficult to get period locations set dressed in the right era. That was a real challenge for both Mike and I. You can get the locations that you need. They just cost a lot more money than we had. We did find one location that was actually dressed already period and that was the bar. We found this little tiki bar in North Hollywood and it was already set dressed for that era. This was not a set, this was an actual bar. So we actually had to be in and out in the same day within the same eight hour period. So that means we had to load everything in, set everything up, shoot, strike, and load everything out. So it was a real challenge. And on top of that, the bar needed a lot of lighting and we just didn't have a lot of time to light it. The shower scenes had their own challenges. Mike and Brian hadn't really figured out the shower until basically the very last minute. So that means that I couldn't pre-light. So what we ended up doing was putting it on the Lazy Susan, much like we did with the SVD, so we can rotate that and the angles that I wanted. Also, all the shower scenes are gonna be day for night, so there's a certain way you have to light day for night, always backlit, so that means that I had to do a lot of tweaking right at the very last minute to get the angles that I wanted to get. Obviously, as a director of photography, you wanna get dynamic shots, and techno cranes are great for that. Unfortunately, we could not afford that, so what I ended up doing was building one. What I came up with was a franking crane. It consisted of a jib, speed rail, a drone, and a platform, custom made for the drone. So what was happening is that I had the jib laying on the speed rail, angled at certain angles, sliding down the speed rail. With a combination of the jib laying on the speed rail, I was able to achieve a techno crane motion. 